Welcome back everybody. Um, I am here with a quick video on how to play uh, this is ultra tiny epic galaxies but this same setup and everything works for regular tiny epic galaxies I just happen to have the ultra tiny version which um, is exactly the same um, but has these unique little tiny dice here that you can see um, all the components however fit in a regular size deck of cards tuck box there so super super um, light travels well um, fits in your pocket you can see I've gotten plenty of wear on my box just because I can throw it in my luggage I can throw it in my pocket um, this entire setup uh, could fit on a table tray on an airplane so very handy to have it this size but um, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to pick a color for yourself it really doesn't matter and then you're going to pick a color for the AI and you can see here at the bottom that I'm playing the medium level uh, rogue colony all that really changes for the rogue colony is what actions they take against you when they roll their um, you know, uh, I forget what this symbol is called here, utilize their colony action. Um, these actions are harder against you, um, per se. And there are a few things you can do to step up the difficulty, like re-rolling the rogue colony dice and things like that if they don't hit on something. But essentially they start with all four of their ships in tow, but zero uh, resources, and they start on the bottom colony level here which means if they roll their colony action dice I'm gonna lose one energy um, icon or one energy off my track I will start with two ships here and then I get more ships by increasing my colony or my empire level uh, at level two I will get to roll five dice instead of four at three I will get my third ship at four I'll get an extra dice at five I'll get a ship and six I'll get to roll all seven dice and that's essentially all you're doing here is you're rolling out these tiny little dice and you are taking actions based on what the symbol is and every turn you get to roll the dice one time and then you may choose any number of dice to reroll for free a second time. After that, you need to either spend an energy resource to reroll a die, or some actions, colony actions that you gain from colonizing planets, um, will allow you to reroll dice. And we'll talk about that in a second. So just quickly going over these, um, this little icon, which has the arrow on it allows you to take a ship and either put it into orbit, which means you put it on these tracks here along the outside, or you could put it directly onto your planet and you instantly gain that resource. But you're not gonna be colonizing the planet. You actually have to get another die like this to take it off this planet and move it to another one. You can't ever go from planet to orbit. Um, you have to change to a completely different card um, or I guess you could use it to come back I don't know why you would um, essentially if someone ever does colonize this card if your ship is either in orbit further behind or on planet you're immediately kicked off you're immediately sent back to your galaxy and you know in this case the AI would claim that card but let's just say for example that we use this die action here when you use them you put them up here so you can keep track of them and then you can see that I need this mountainous um, economy symbol uh, or maybe this one's economy and this one's diplomacy I forget which one but this die here this face of the die would be allow me to advance any one ship on one of my um, mountainous symbol planets let's call that one yeah let's call that one diplomacy now say I had landed over here and I had rolled this dice you can see the symbol matches here I get to move that one um, the trick for the AI is that the AI if they get a ship symbol they will take their first ship and they will automatically land it on the first if you count these off one two three four the AI will automatically land here first second third and fourth if for some reason this planet is taken away and they're kicked off 
and this planet becomes open, even if they have two and three filled, they will go back and they will always start filling up the left one first. Say they have landed here and here on these two planets, they would technically have to have a guy here, and then they rolled this symbol just like us. They will then advance all of their ships. So they actually get a better economy of scale out of rolling these um, planet resource die. So that's how you eventually colonize a planet if your plane reaches it to the end space here, not the last number, but actually reaches off the number onto the very end space, you get to claim that card. You would take it and stick it under your deck. You can slide it under there, but I find, you know, you could slide it under there like that, but I find that really messes up, especially in this ultra tiny game, it messes up all your, your pieces. It's very tricky here, even with a nice soft mat underneath. I can try and see if I can, oh, see? That one kind of jumped. It's just more trouble than it's worth, honestly. Just just stick it down underneath. But essentially what you have done now is added a second action to your um, colony, utilized colony action, which would be this symbol. So if you rolled this symbol, the half circle symbol on the die, you would get to um, always do what this one is, but any planet that you have colonized, you get that option as well. You can't do them both, you have to choose one. Um, but a general tip is that I love to go after planets that allow me to re-roll my dice, um, because I, I feel that re-rolling dice and getting them to exactly the resources you want um, each turn is, is how you can be successful. The last two here are the um, energy and culture sides of the dice. These simply just advance your little tracker further up and around here. And again, you use energy to reroll dice. You use culture to follow uh, another player in this um, instance, the AI, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but you can also use one or the other in a combination your utilize colony action is to increase your empire so and you have to spend the amount you're moving up to so for me to be able to start rolling five dice I need to spend at least either two energy or two culture I can't do one one and one um, and as you get further up you can see it gets more expensive the goal of the game um, certainly versus the AI is to get to 21 victory points you can see the victory points here on the lower corner of each planet card and you also earn victory points for the level of empire you are at. A lot of people forget about that. They could be way up here and you could be earning three extra points and if you're at 18 victory points from your planets you have now one because 18 plus 3 is 21. Um, and that's pretty much it. Each turn you are going to roll the amount of die that you're allotted to based on your empire level. So you roll them out and you would say, whew, man, three ship symbols. Obviously, I only have two ships, so I don't even need one of these. But I could say I could use this one if I'm going to go here or here. Um, and then I'm going to re-roll this one. And it's another third ship symbol. So this one's kind of a dead die for me this turn. But either way, you would take your actions one at a time, placing them up here. Because this symbol is useless right now. Um, we turn it around face the right way. But as soon as you take this action, land a ship over here, then you can take this action and move that ship once. Um, some just general advice for these little dice. Um, if you have um, a mat, which makes it nice for putting the cards down on, the dice don't quite roll as well um, on, on the mat. Um, they just kind of flatten out. What I have found is that they do roll better on a harder surface like a table. Um, they kind of spin and bounce a little bit better. And when I'm rolling for the individual AI, the AI actually rolls their dice one at a time. So that way you don't have to decide in what order would be best for them to play um, certain dice. You roll them one at a time, you complete that action, then you roll another die. It's very not very satisfying, in my opinion, to, to shake up one little die, this little cube, and get it going. I mean, it does work, but 
What I have found is even nicer is I actually just pick up, say the AI is rolling five dice, that's what they start with. I pick them all up in my hand, and from a decent height, I just drop the die. And then I would do that action, drop the die, do that action. So dropping them one at a time almost seems, they almost seem to roll better in my opinion. So either playing on a hard surface um, like a regular table or having uh, you know a dice tray like this one that's just you know nothing fancy about it. This is a very basic one that's just made of wood. Got a wooden bottom in it. Um, so those are just you know essentially that's that's how to play. Um, having a dice tray around to roll your cubes on is is just a general tip. Uh, another tip I would have for players is to always have kind of at least one culture uh, in store. So if you're if you've used one and you're down to zero and one of your culture dice comes up, um, you know go ahead and. Uh, you know, use it to get one back because you never know when the AI is going to take an action, especially when they're starting to move around the planet and you want to keep pace with them. Say you have, you know, landed here and you are one ahead and then they come behind you and land here and then the AI rolls that symbol to move him around the planet. Well, instead of letting him catch up with you, you can use one uh, culture resource to also move and you, you essentially stay one ahead of him. So that's the follow action that you can do on their turn. So if they get really lucky and roll a die at the perfect time and it's a resource that you would really like to have as well, having a culture, at least one in, in hand to spend at any given time um, is just a great strategy. As far as energy is concerned, I tend not to build up a lot of energy until I specifically want to upgrade my empire level because the AI, especially in the beginning, their basic uh, colony action is almost always steal or lose uh, an energy icon. So I tend not to keep a lot of this in the bank if I don't have any. Um, there's nothing for me to lose, nothing for them to take. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. Why don't I go ahead and go through a couple rounds real quick and you guys can see how it plays. So I'm always gonna go first. Um, I'll just roll them out here on the table. So let's see here. I have four dice to start off with. I have a culture icon, um, colony icon. So I could use this to upgrade my colony and get five dice. I'll probably do that right off the bat because more dice means more actions. Um, energy and culture I don't really need right now and I don't have any use for that. I need to get some ships in orbit and I've got, I can spend my two here so let's reroll all three of these. Alright, so even more useless. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is do this one which is my colony action, so I'm upgrade, upgrade for two energy, so this actually comes off to zero. Then I'll get an energy back, so I can stack these up like that. And then these two are useless because I don't have any um, thing on a planet. So what I could do is decide hmm, which planet would I much rather land on. Um, let's start going for this planet. So I'm going to save this one and I'm actually going to spend my one resource to reroll this one die. And unfortunately it is colony action. So again, I don't have enough resources to use my colony action, so these are just worthless. So that's my turn. Pretty poor. At least next turn I'll be rolling five. The colony starts out at rolling five and again you roll these one at a time. So I like to just kind of drop them, see where they land. So he gains a um, culture resource. Let's see what else he gets here. Well, he gains, he does his colony action, which is I lose one uh, energy. No penalty against me because I used up all my energy. He would advance all of his ships on the track, but he hasn't shipped anybody off yet. Again, same thing. And same thing. Oops, I moved that one. So, also a pretty weak turn for him. He didn't really do much except gain one culture. Now, quick note on following um, that I forgot to mention. If 
the AI is not able to take an action, say this um, moving this economy, moving, advancing on an economy planet, um, you are not allowed to follow. If they can't take the action, if they didn't take the action, you don't get to follow um, nothing per se. So it goes back to me. I'll roll up all five this time. And let's see. So I've got now one ship that I can send off and I can send them to the planet I wanted to go to and spend these. So I'm gonna hold on to these. I don't really need this right now because I don't have enough to upgrade my colony and I don't really need my one resource. So I'm gonna take these two and re-roll and I got another ship and a culture. So let's go ahead and decide on how to spend these. I'm gonna take a ship and I'm gonna park it way up here on the big seven. Now I'm choosing this one because I feel like this one has the better um, colony action that I can take and it's seven points. So I figure I'm first here. I'm gonna get a good jump start by getting two right off the bat, which I will go ahead and use. So this goes one, two. And then I'll take this one and just so that I have a diversity, um, let's go here. Let's go big right off the bat. And so we're going to try and get these two planets before they do. And that'll put us at 14 points plus one, 15. So I'm six points away from winning the game. So you can see that this game goes quite quickly. Um, and then this last one I would spend to get one more culture action. Um, let's do one more AI turn just to see what they would do. So again, they don't have anybody in orbit, so they don't utilize that action. Again, same thing. And since they're not doing it, I'm not allowed to follow. It would be nice if I could just tick that down and say, oh, sure, I'll move my guy up one, but it's not allowed. So, all right, they gain a cultural resource. Again, um, and you know, you can get lucky sometimes where they just can't get their ships off out of their galaxy and onto a planet. Um, so just a note of what happens when they reach number five here on their track. If they reach it with their cultural resource, they get uh, an additional three bonus die to roll. Um, so you go ahead and you complete all the actions, you pick up three and you re-roll them one at a time just like you always would. If you get the energy resource all the way to the top, you automatically just upgrade their empire to the next one so they're getting more VP and it changes what action they take against you when they roll the half moon symbol. But essentially that's it. Their turn would be over at this point. It's a pretty easy turn for us as far as them. We would re-roll our dice and just go from there. So here you can see I'm advancing really well on that colony. Um, I probably don't need these two so I'm going to set these aside and I'm going to roll these two out. And again, they're pretty worthless. So all I'm basically doing is using these, one, two, three, to move this guy down to three. And that's it. And you'll just keep going like this, back and forth, back and forth, until one of you has accrued 21 total victory points. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, I'll try and address them as quickly as I can. If you are interested in seeing how the satellites and super weapons mini expansion works, um, please leave a comment and below and I will consider uh, looking into how that plays. I actually have not even played or read up on the rules on that, but you can see there's all these additional cards um, that come with the game. Um, these look like, you know, fancy planets. Uh, secret missions. So honestly, I don't know how those work. I don't even know if you can play with them solo, but if somebody is interested in seeing how the plays, um, please let me know and I will look into doing a quick video that covers that. But again, this was Ultra Tiny Epic Galaxies. Again, works for both Tiny Epic Galaxies and Ultra Tiny Epic Galaxies, but this is how you play solo against the AI. Um, thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful night.